Can you hear me well enough? You're alive right now. So, uh, are you ready, man? You got the big um, debut this, um, what is it, this Monday? You got a um, Monday night micro. Yeah, I'm really excited. We've been filming since Memorial Day weekend nonstop. You know, the virus put everybody that's a nationally touring show in a jam, shut us down. You know, we do 200 shows a year, 20 shows a month all across the United States. And our last show was March 15th because of the virus. Wow. Yeah, so we shut that down and um, had to start coming up with new ideas just in case we never got the tour again. So because we have our own building in Pigeon Forge where we have our own show, um, we decided to start filming. And I uh, was going to start what we call Monday Night Micro. It's actually a you know wrestling reality show with the Micro Wrestling Federation. That should be great. You're going to start like, uh, you got some good storylines, I guess, coming up. Yeah, you know, we got some we've been working on. You know, so I don't know. I think we're going to think we're going to do pretty well. Uh, you know, I'm a first time filmmaker kind of thing. So, you know, what I did was, so for the last two years, I have had 10 interested production companies that has been trying to shop our show to the major networks for a show. You know, I signed three um, exclusive deals with three different production companies. And, uh, man, they went to Netflix, E, USA, um, like 10 networks. We were turned down by all of them. Um, and no one said it was the, the, the content in which we have, but it was more like the timing and all that kind of stuff. So I told myself if we didn't have our own show by the time I opened up Pigeon Forge, I was going to do it myself. And unfortunately, I got so busy, I didn't have the time, you know, with running Pigeon Forge, booking the road shows. I had no time. But the virus actually pushed us into the position where I had no choice. So yeah. because of the virus, we now have our own Internet show that we're starting. It's a monthly subscription show. We're going to release a new episode every Monday. We're going to call it Monday Night Micro. Um, and, uh, you know, we're pretty excited. The guys are working hard filming. Like I said, we've been filming relentlessly since Memorial Day weekend. Wow. Let me ask you a question. How crazy is it now wrestling without a crowd? Have you been watching even wrestling without the crowd? How weird it is? Man, I got to tell you, I'm not really a wrestling fan. You know, oh, yeah. when I, you know, when I was younger, I wrestled, uh, I went to the wrestling school, uh, Dean Malenko. You know what Dean Malenko is? Oh, yeah. I know Dean Malenko. One yeah. of the man of a thousand moves. Yeah. Well, I, I went to wrestling school in my early 20s. I went to when his dad was alive at the time. It was Larry Malenko, Boris Malenko. Yeah. And, you know, I, I learned how to wrestle down there. I trained. I, you know, I wrestled about 15 matches. I went to – I wrestled over in Japan. I wrestled locally all around Florida, Tampa area. But, man, it, just, it wasn't for me. I, I had another business going at the time, and – I couldn't work for fifteen, twenty dollars a show doing these independent things until stuff happened. You know, I got fortunate enough where I went to Japan, you know, six months right after wrestling school. But I just just didn't resonate with me, man. I don't know. I didn't really like it. And I just end up getting into the the micro wrestling. You know, we don't call it midget wrestling anymore. Micro wrestling, trying to be politically correct, you know. My guys don't really care about the term, but, you know, there's a lot of other people out there, and I don't know what it's like to be a little person. So I just, you know, I'm trying to go along with everyone else, and we just call it micro wrestling. But um, I got into micro wrestling. I just happened I was running a Chippendale show, booking <laughs> – uh, uh, it was crazy. I was booking male strippers and comedians all over the United States. Had over a thousand bookings in 2017, and I just got tired of strippers and uh, strippers and comedians, man. Just a bunch of bitches, you know, <laughs> whiny yeah. motherfuckers, man. You know, um, can I curse? Uh, let me tell you, man. You're like you're a fascinating dude to me, man. You, you, you every time you think you're down, you, you like rise like the phoenix from the ashes, come back and you kick some ass. Like, you know what? You used to have the. It used to be called. Um, what was it? it was Midget Wrestling uh, Federation? No, my, no, no. It's never. It was, it was never called that. It was always called the Micro Wrestling Federation. Micro Wrestling? I thought it was mid in the beginning. Then you changed it to Micro for... No, no, no. You know what, man? It was, it's always been Micro Wrestling Federation, and I bought the company from a guy named P.O.D. He was actually he was actually a little person, and he started the company back in 2000, um, and uh, he taught me how to... I was his booking agent, and he taught me how to use the word midget as a, as a marketing tool. Yeah. Well, over the last few years with all the little people shows out there, 
everyone's you know gone against that word and you know i don't, I don't want to be the guy to piss people off so man, yeah you know, change the word i don't need to use it anymore i mean i'm a salesman man i, don't, I can sell you know, i went from selling uh you know male strippers to comedians to micro wrestlers man so it doesn't matter what word i have to use you know so um i just changed it but this guy's name was pod he went as the pissed off dwarf <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah, well, he was, I was a comical man. I, I saw the guy and I'm like, holy crap, I can sell this. You know, I never even seen a midget wrestling show and I was already booking it. You know, I had a database of thousands of clubs from booking male strippers and um, stand up comedians. And I just went to work, man. And, you know, this guy was used to doing 20, 25 shows a year. Um, first year I took it over, I booked him 40 shows in the first four months of 2008. He, he had a heart. He had a heart attack. He was like, "Oh, whoa, we gotta postpone, man. We gotta suspend all these bookings. My wife doesn't want me on the road." And I was like, "Yeah, well, we better come." We came to an agreement. I, I gave him five grand, and he took off, man. I took over since then, you know. But unfortunately, I went to prison for seven years. <laughs> wow, hey, shit happens, man. But hey, you're back out doing what you love. Right. Um, let me answer a question. How's the whole thing? How was the first season at Pigeon Forge? How you guys do over there before this horrible virus? You know, um, well, so for people who don't know about Pigeon Forge, which a lot of people don't, um, Pigeon Forge is located 45 miles south of Knoxville, Tennessee. Um, it's just at the base of the Smoky Mountains, and it the area hosts 10 to 14 million tourists a year. Um, Pigeon Forge, you know, we ask people, you ever heard of Pigeon Forge? And they say, no. You go, hey, have you ever heard of Dollywood? And they go, oh, yeah, I heard of Dollywood. So there's like 60 or 70 different shows down there on one long street. You know, uh, Gatlinburg is a neighboring city. So my thought process was, you know, we toured the country doing 200 shows a year. We averaged three to 500 people at our shows. Shoot, last year I had 24 shows with 1,000 to 2,000 people, and my biggest was 3,000. So wow. I thought, yeah, I thought, well, you know, what if I got into a tourist town where people come to us rather than us touring the country? Um, we end up driving through Pigeon Forge. One time, uh, one of the little guys who had worked for my company got a job working for one of the Dolly Parton shows. He knew we were touring in the area, and he says, hey, man, stop by. Dude, as soon as I pull into town, I saw a theater for rent, man. I was like, oh, my gosh, I never was in Pigeon Forge before. I was thinking I was going to do this in Nashville. We pull into Pigeon Forge, man. I tell you what, it's the happiest place on earth, man, the greatest place. Um, you know, it's, it's it's the woods, you know, uh, right at the base of the Smoky Mountains. Um you drive down one long street and there's nothing but go-kart tracks, putt-putt golf, magic shows, dinner shows. I mean, it's amazing down there. I love it. But, you know, our first season, I signed my lease in February and then I opened up in June. So I missed all of the advertising down there the first year. But we still did well. You know what I mean? Like I, I was losing money every month. I still am. But the Pigeon Forge for me was a long term. It was more of a marathon marathon type thing like in three two two to three years from now we'll be sold out five nights a week but through the virus man I, I, we did better than expected to be honest with you i was shocked that you know nothing like the road we did a steady hundred people a night throughout the summer and that was pretty good for us you know what i mean you know when we didn't have anything you know our road was shut down in march so we lost two weeks in march all of april and all of may and then we opened up pigeon forge in june and the guys were like hey man we don't care what we got to do we're we just want to work. Wow, that's good, man. You know what's crazy? Vince and Matt made rest of the essential workers. Oh yeah, that was nuts, man. <laughs> that you know what, man? That guy, that guy's amazing for just the, some of the things he he had he has pulled off. Along with Dana White, Dana White as well. He's got to get a lot of credit, man. Those those oh, guys. If I could ever scratch the surface of what either one of those guys had done, man, I'd be I'd I'd be I'd die happily, you know. Let me tell you, you never know. Saudi Arabia might give you an offer the way Saudi Arabia. They love the entertainment, the wrestling and stuff. Because they they pretty much bought UFC for a bunch of money. Now UFC got their own island. And a wrestling man is looking into buying an island and a boat to, since, since this thing is going on so long. He's looking at a boat to do some, some of the events. Yeah. Well, you know, that, that's like us. We have our own building now. You know, there's other companies out there beside us, but we're the only one that has their own building. And if you guys ever have a chance, check out, go to microwrestling.com and click on the link that says Pigeon Forge. You know, there's thousands and thousands of independent wrestling shows all around the country. You know, unfortunately, a lot of people 
Um, when you think about wrestling, you think of, you know, WWE and that's it. But you know as well as I do of all the independent wrestling companies. Oh, there's hundreds and hundreds of independent yeah, wrestling. Thousands of them. There's one in every city, you know. And, I, you know, I got to tell you, a lot of those guys come into our building and they walk in and they go, oh, my God, I'm amazed. Um, this is an awesome building, man. Like, I... I spent every dime that I had made in the last four years. Like I got my whole entire life savings, my retirement, man. Like if Pigeon Forge goes south, man, I'll be on the street corner, man. I don't think I think you're you're a guy that always going to come back, man. No matter what, I think I think uh, I think if you hang in there a few years, you're going to be fine, man. The thing is, we got to wait till they get this freaking virus done, man, because this is enough of this stuff, man. I'm ready to. I'm ready to get the hell out of here and just do some stuff, man. That's a bartender. It's been rough too, but you know okay. what? Thank God for uh, the listeners of the show. I've been um, I've been scrapping by just because you know what? People, the support, the love, people have been showing, and you know what? I want to show the love and support for you guys because you guys. Let me tell you, I seen your guys in Nashville, and when you see a bunch of uh, micros in a steel cage, it's pretty incredible. Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot <laughs> to get that one. You know what? That. At that show right there, you know, we were predominantly a nightclub show. So we were doing nothing but working nightclubs. And I got sick and tired of arguing and fighting with club owners, man. You know, to me, there's like two types of club owners. There's either there's guys that are that are successful at the nightclub business and then there there's there are guys that aren't. So you got you got you got people that are they're either stingy or greedy or I, you know, I just hate working in nightclubs, man. You know, I got some really good ones that I held on to, man, that I have really close associations with, but it's just like hit or miss. And for me, I wanted to do, I wanted to be more of an all ages family friendly show. So we started, we, I became my own promoter, man. Started renting my own fairgrounds, got an insurance policy, you know, but taking on the, doing your own promoting things, there's a lot of responsibility. You got to have that insurance and you got to rent the building. Then you got to pay for the advertising. I got to pay for the hotels. I got to pay for the payrolls. You know, usually I walk into a nightclub, man, and they pay for everything. I get paid take four hotel rooms, drinks, food. Now I got to take on that responsibility. In 2017, I had done my first one, and man, I tell you what, I got lucky. You know what I mean? We we had some huge shows. Uh, we did that Nashville show in January of 2018, and had 2,200 people there. Man, um, I had another one. You know, I mean, that's huge. You know what I mean? We did like we did like almost 30 grand that night at the door. You know, going yeah, from that's a, crazy, man. You know, we went from a nightclub show. You know, I, 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 my my number is five grand. You know what I mean? That's what I want. And you can't, the arguments I would get out of nightclubs for $5,000 just wasn't worth the hassle any longer. So now what I do, man, is uh, I'm, and, and, and my numbers have gone up by that. You want to buy my show on a weekend, it, it's 10 grand, you know, because I'm doing 10,000 or better on, on a, you know, Friday or Saturday, man. You know what I mean? So we just be, being able to, I got to get a lot of the credit to Facebook, man. If it wasn't for Facebook, that, that platform took us above and beyond where we would be. You know what I mean? My company's a small company, but how many wrestling companies you know that are doing a million dollars a year in sales? Wow, you know? not, not especially independent, it's tough. That's no, tough, man. man. We've done we've done a million dollars in sales two years in a row, over a million, you know? We're, that, we're a legit company now, you know what I mean? You know, you know what I mean? So, you know, with that being, with that being said, you know, just to me, I want to continue to grow and get bigger and bigger and, you know, this virus, that put a put a hurting on not only me but everyone in the entertainment business. So now it's figuring out like you know, and I try not to watch the news, but I watched it the other day, and it seems like these numbers are still growing. You know, so touring for us is suspended right now. Like I don't, I'm, I'm fortunate enough. I'm in a tourist town, and of course we've been open since June. Um, but man, I, I I just I was supposed to close in Pigeon Forge on August eighth to hit the road. We were doing our last two weeks of August was in Illinois and Wisconsin, and they're still hurting up there. So I canceled all those, and I just then we're supposed to go to Florida in September for three weeks, and uh, Texas for three weeks in August. But you know what? Just every city has a different rule within these states. Um, so it's just I didn't want to get stuck with it. So I just I just had to move all of my September, all of my October, and all of my November. I just rescheduled until. Uh, February, March, and April of, of next year. I think by then we should be off. I think we should be fine by then. Hopefully, we'll be fine. Things should be reopened and um, you know hit the road again and start doing uh, your tour. So um, let me ask you: So, how many episodes you got so far? For um, how many episodes have you done so far for uh, Monday Night um, for uh, Monday Night Micro? Um, man, I've, I I got 
really I, well i've got enough i've got enough right now i've been working on at least eight episodes i have right now not to mention i'm going to do an episode of you know we have a two foot ten inch lady comedian who works for the company she's the smallest comedian in the in, on the planet her name is <laughs> Wendy so we're going to do like an epi- a whole episode with just her you know i think it'd be a different change um than you know just the wrestling and and then i got a bunch of road footage that i have from years ago that i can put together stuff from you know past and i got some flashback stuff we're going to do where we had done some shows with some celebrities uh we had done a show with uh 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 uh, uh springer jerry springer was at one of our gigs <laughs> I, 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 I have a bunch of stuff and and then i tell you i just keep filming non-stop you know what i mean it's like i so here was here was something that went down that went bad um you know i don't know anything about filmmaking or anything like that um you know i pull out a camera so i hired a film a film guy. This guy's got like six, seven cameras, works for a church. He was only going to, I was like, look, I just want one camera. And he's like, no, no, no. So this guy went up, put four cameras up. It was amazing. Like what, what I learned from this guy I was shocked. I'm like, oh my God, I'm so glad that I hired this guy. And you know, I'm, I'm, I'm at limited funds right now because of the virus. You know what I mean? So I got to be real efficient with my spending. And I just, I can't be doing things ridiculously right now, you know? So I hired this guy teaches me about the camera angles. And then all of a sudden he caught, we filmed one whole week. I was down in Pigeon Forge, came back to Cincinnati where I live. He called, I met, I saw him on Saturday. He put all the footage on a hard drive. I get home Saturday night, start editing because I taught myself how to use uh, Premiere Pro, which is an editing uh, program that everybody uses to edit. Oh, that's great stuff. So I taught myself how to use it. He calls me up and he says, hey, man, he calls me on Monday. I just saw him Saturday. He goes, hey, man, I got to tell you, I just got uh, diagnosed. I have I have COVID. Um, he's got he had COVID. He had influenza A. And he had pneumonia. So wow. he ended up going to ICU. And he was he, I, I brought a message him every day for about a month. And he was getting worse and worse and worse every day. So now I'm like, oh, my God, what am I going to do? And this was in the middle the beginning of July. So we filmed Memorial Day weekend all of June getting on the pattern. I'm starting to learn. And all of a sudden this guy finds out he has COVID. I don't know what's going to happen. So I went out, I dropped shit, man. I bought four different cameras of my own. I bought all the, I bought all the audio equipment. I had no idea how to use this stuff. I watched about a hundred videos on YouTube. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's so the I was, new world. <laughs> you know I mean, I was putting, I was, my back was against the wall yet once again, because now I'm thinking like, Oh my God, I got some of this footage and I just spent all this money on him. What am I going to do? And Thankfully, he was able to coach me, you know, from the hospital and I talked to him every day and then watching the YouTube videos. And, you know, there's a lot of things I, I, I learned, man, like th- there was in some of our shows that we had seven camera angles set up and I taught myself how to edit with all using all those camera angles. Wow. So, but but like, you know, you, you'll, you'll see like on episode one. You know, some like the room was a little bit too dark when the lights weren't on all the way, so the cameras would struggle with the autofocus kind of thing. But you know, we figured that out. We went and bought more lights. Um, you know, there's a bunch of things we figured out. We had to buy different cameras because some of the cameras have difficulty filming in low light. You know, and I didn't want to have all the lights on in my building. I wanted it to be more of an intimate atmosphere. Um, but hey, thankfully we were allowed to open up and have a crowd. Like we weren't, we didn't have. You know, I got a 300 seat mini arena we call the micro auditorium. And we went down from 300 seats down to about 100 because of the virus. But we still, we sold out every night for the filming pretty much, man. And then it was better to have 100 people in there six feet yeah, nobody. than nobody, you know what I mean? So, you know, I, you know, we went through our shares of trials and tribulations, man. Every time I turn around, I'm struggling with adversity, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, wow. it is. It is. I, I, you know what? I, I got out of prison, and no one just like gave this to me, man. Like I've, I've worked my ass off to get to where we're at today, man. You know, and I've had, I've got to give a lot of credit to the guys. I've got some really talented guys, man. You know, I got El Torito working for me now for two years. Yeah, you got some great guys, man. Um, Melo Mario, you got um, Melo Mario. You got yeah. um, uh, Ryan that always has an attitude. <laughs> Ryan, 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 most hated. Yeah pro wrestler in america um but you know what the i got the the, the brooks brothers jamie brooks and uh jacob brooks they're the best wrestling they're the best they, they, they're the best wrestlers in this landscape you know when when, when you want to see the best match between two little guys it's these guys you know these guys are 28 29 years old they were pro wrestlers before they were even out of high school 
You know, like these kids are amazing. And, and then bringing El Torito from the WWE over there, man. You know, let me tell you, man, that guy, as far as athleticism goes, you know, that guy's not used to wrestling little people. You know, he, you people see him on the WWE and he worked Hornswoggle, you know, some matches. But his his fame and everything in Mexico came from wrestling tall guys. So wow. for him wrestling a little guy, it totally changes the whole you know, landscape of the way that he knows how to wrestle. You know what I mean? But just bringing him over there, man, is, he, he's an inspiration for the guys. You know what I mean? So having somebody with that kind of fame, you know, actually he wrestled up in New York not long ago in front of like six or 7,000 people somewhere. Wow. Yeah, I'm not sure what promotion it was, but, you know, he's been with us full time for two years now. And then periodically from time to time he goes, works with, uh, what is it, CML, uh, uh, AAA? There's yeah, like, the Mexican uh, wrestling. Yeah, there's like three, three of those promotions down there that are huge that he works for, man. You know, so. But I'm, but I'm, I'm, I'm happy and I feel fortunate, man. You know, I'm, I'm not a religious or political guy. You know, I, I work hard for everything that I have. I feel blessed and grateful that everything that I've done has, has, has worked so far. You know. Yeah, man, the, Jack, you, you're impressive, man. I'm telling you, you, you work from, from this whole micro thing, from going, going to jail, coming and getting the business back and starting over because you, you lost it. You started it over again, you know, for a bit. And now yeah, you that you're back at the top. You got your own network. Yeah. You also got, um, can you tell us about the 800 number? Some of these people want to get in touch with uh -huh. some of the micros. So, so, you know, the virus has everyone who's a touring entertainer, your back is against the wall, man. You got to figure something out, you know? So we're like, okay, well, what can we do for these guys? You know, all of our fans, you know, we tour the country. We're an East Coast operation, but we go to California once a year. We go to North Dakota, South Dakota. Um, you know, we even go to the Northeast. You know, we have a show in Wontaw, New York, and Long Island that we do um, twice yeah. a year. And we can't travel now. So all of the people from around the country has been emailing me saying, hey, man, when are you guys coming back? And we don't know yet. So I thought, well, let's start this Internet show. And then I thought, what would even be better what, how amazing would it be if El Torito or Heavy Metal Mario or Flying Ryan can say happy birthday to one, one of your children? You know, we get a, our, our show is a family show. These kids fall in love with the wrestlers. So I thought, well, let me start an 800 number. So we have an 800 number right now that you can call and talk to one of the wrestlers. You could text chat one of the wrestlers or you could live video chat one of the wrestlers. And all that info is on our website at microwrestling.com. And if you look in the navigation bar, just look for where it says micro chat. And uh, like Brian Ryan, he's a shit talker. How, yeah. would be, how would it be to have him call up one of your friends and and and, and insult him for the day? You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, yeah, that's great. You know? Or, you know, if you're a worker and or if you're a boss and you want somebody fired, let, let one of the micro wrestlers fire your employee for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's <Yeah. pretty> funny. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just trying to come up with ways for these guys to make additional money, man. You know, you know what really lit a spark under me with this was once the virus started, and then that uh, Tiger King was that the name of it? The yeah, thing the that, Tiger uh, King. That was great. You know, I never, I never watched it, but dude, every time you pull up Facebook, somebody was talking about it. Like it was ridiculous. Like how that, like that thing had to be the most popular show at the beginning of the virus. And oh I yeah, thought, everybody watched that. There were people home and they binge it. It was great. It was great. It was great. I watched it. <laughs> you, you watched it? It was great. It was it, you know, it's everything. It had suspense. It had it had like rich people coming in. It had a it had the whole thing with this woman that might have killed her husband. It was great. It was like everything you want in a documentary. Ten it was like I think eight episodes, seven. It was great. So that my, my thought was, when I, as soon as I saw how popular that got, I was like, wow, if I had this internet show going right now, we could probably gain some momentum. Even if I got like a small little sliver of, you know, what, what that had taken in, you know what I mean? And like for me right now, man, I'm single. I'm not, I'm, 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 I don't have any kids, man. I, you know, I'm pretty debt free, man. So my thing right now though, is I'm worried about my guys. You know what I mean? Like with, with, with them, yeah. you know, a lot, a lot of these kids, have never had any other jobs beside wrestling. You know what I mean? Um, this has been it for several of those kids, man. And without my company, what are they going to do? You know, um, you know, it's not that they're not hard workers and they couldn't figure it out, but you got to remember that the toughest thing for them is reaching things, being little. 
So working even at a fast food restaurant poses challenges. You know, so for me right now, man, is my concern is you know, the, the guys who are basically my family, man. You know, um, you know, I've been out of jail for four years. I don't only people I really associate is with these guys, man. It's like this is it for me, man. You know what I mean? So I just I want to make sure I can take care of them. And you know, if something happened, God forbid, and you know, I, I die tomorrow, man. If they have something, you know, I die tomorrow, at least I got Pigeon Forge. You know, there's no way they're gonna be able to book and run the shows like I do because like what, what I do is pretty difficult, you know, 200 shows a year, staying organized, having the ha having ha having the ambition to get up every day and make 100 phone calls. And, you know, 95 of those calls are all going to tell you no, you know, but, you know, that, that's what I do, man. You know, I've been I've been a salesman selling shows since I'm 51 years old right now. I've been a salesman selling shows since I've been 22, starting off with the mail reviews, you know. But wow. But if I die tomorrow, man, Pigeon Forge will still run and these guys will have, you know what I mean? Because that place is set already. You know what I mean? Like people already know us, you know, down there we're in. So the big advertising in Pigeon Forge is brochure racks. You know, there's like seven, I were in like 650 brochure racks. I'm in two coupon books. So people go down there. The first thing they do is they gravitate toward those coupon, those brochure racks. They pull them out. They look for the discounts and then they find us, man. And. You know, there's days I wake up, I got 20, 25 phone calls just answering the phone for reservations for Pigeon Forge, you know? Wow, that's great, man. Because you know what's funny? I've seen you on the road with these guys, and it's always funny when we all go to a restaurant and eat. <laughs> it's like everybody's like, what the, what the hell's going on here? It's the, it's the funniest feed. It's the greatest thing ever. We just walk with all these micros into a restaurant. They jump in on top of the chairs and order food. It's amazing, man. <laughs> I always yeah. enjoy that. Oh yeah, they're a great group of kids too, man. And they, they, you know, some of them don't. They they struggle with, you know, starting or being a celebrity. Which you know we're not, you know, we're nowhere near our level like a celebrity, like you know, like a Kardashian or something like that. But, and I think that's where they struggle with it. But I'm like, look, you guys, people look at you, and you know, they, they know that you know what I mean. We're all traveling in a pack. You know, they got the, all their micro wrestling shirts on. Maybe they're not sure what they do, but people know something's going on and. You know, a lot of times people come up and ask for pictures and, you know, these guys don't want to take pictures and stuff. And I'm like, hey, man, listen, that comes that's a part of being a celebrity, man. You know what I mean? This is what you signed up for, man. You know what I mean? You got to be nice to people. You got to take autographs. You know, like right now, you know, not only am I trying to, uh, um, you know, look out for these guys, but I've, I've had some success with this, obviously, in the last four years that I've been out of prison. And, and I want to give back, man. So, you know, I get a lot of phone calls. People will call me you know, a couple times a month looking for free tickets for fundraisers that they have, um, you know, around Tennessee and stuff. And I always give them the tickets. I have a girl right now um, that has, I know a girl that has a, a daughter who has some sort of brain cancer and um, uh, breaks my heart whenever I see children going through adversity like that. So um, I'm organizing a, we're going to do a show for this child and 100% of all the funds are going to go to this poor kid. You know, um, they're struggling with one income, you know, for the family. And, you know, I, I want to give back and I want to do something, man. You know what I mean? So um, I'm trying to organize that right now, you know, so. Wow, man, Ben, you're doing so. Um, so um, when, when does that benefit? Um, well, I'm not. I'm not sure yet. I'm. I'm trying to do it for them in February, but they're okay, like, so we, yeah. But they're like, in, you know, I, I, I figured I'd want to do it in the community where they live, and they live in Panama City, but they're not in Panama City right now for some reasons. Okay, Memphis, Tennessee. You know, so I just, I just felt it would be. I never done anything like this before. Although, you know, I, you know, I contacted St. Jude's Hospital. Same thing. I said to the, someone over there, I was like, hey, man, you know, I'd like to offer a free show for these kids, you know what I mean, that are you know, struggling with cancer. And I never heard back from them or whatnot. So maybe if somebody's watching now that, you know, anything that has to do with children, man, you know what I mean? We're, 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 I'm, I, I want to be there to help, you know. Jack, do you look at Make a Wish? If had they contact you anytime, Make a Wish? Oh, but, you know, you know my nephew, um, I know, but I would. I, you know, I would do anything for, for children, you know, make, a, make a wish was huge. You know, my, my nephew, Corey has, um, has, uh, you know, something wrong with him and make a wish sent them to uh super bowl one year. Did you oh. know that? <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, they, yeah, they say, I mean, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be able to do anything like that. You know what I mean? But no, I, I know that. But maybe I, some I, of the kids I, might want to meet some of the micros or whatever and start yeah, doing stuff like that. Just think, you know? how, just think how amazing it would be to go to like St. Jude's Hospital and, and put up the ring and do a show for these kids, man. You know, I mean. You know, also, you got to remember, too, like these kids are they know what it's like to deal with adversity, man. Maybe not on a disease, you know, like cancer level being in the hospital. But, you know, look, they, they, their lives haven't been easy. And, you know, these no. kids, they were born with a disadvantage, but they're not stable, you know, and they're they're out there working and living their dreams as professional workers right now, man. They're great spokespeople. You know, um, I tried putting together an anti-bullying campaign. You know what I mean? A lot of these kids growing up have been bullied. You know, if there's anybody out there that's a teacher in a school or anything like that, and, you know, we could use the micro wrestlers, you know what I mean, to 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 do, you know, no bullying type stuff, man. You know, um, I'm just trying to think somewhere outside of like, how, how can I help in the community some way or another with, 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 with the platform that I have, you know, and, and, and anything when it comes to children, you know what I mean? I, I, I want to be there and I want to do, I want to do my part, man, you know. That's good, Jack. So let me, okay, let's get to the, um, so how can we get some of your merch? Because I know you, do you have hats, t-shirts? Man, I have, we have four, I think we have four different hats. Actually, right now, as a matter of fact, every one of the wrestlers will have their own merch. Um, my, oh, my, right. my, my t-shirt guy's turning it up right now. But if, yeah, you go to microwrestling.com, click on the link that says merchandise up there. Um, you know, we, I think we got three or four different t-shirts. We got tank tops for ladies. I got Four different hats, masks, uh, you know, we have koozies, shot glasses, knapsacks. You know, I, I got a whole line of merch, you know. And I'm wearing one of the hats right I now. It. I wear this hat all the time. War, it's a little worn out, though, man. We got to get you some new ones. Oh, yeah. I wear it all the time, and people are always, like, walking up. What is that? Oh, I see. It's, it's, it's a micro. It's little It's little people's wrestling. And they, all, they get all fascinated and start talking text, to me about text, it. Text me your address, and I'll send you a box of stuff. I even like the. I even like this. I support microviolence. <laughs> well, you know the history of that was so when the, when, when I bought the company from POD, that was that was their slogan was I support, but it was I support midget violence. I seen those shirts. I seen them. Yeah. Like the old school, yeah. You know what, man? And it was cool and everything. People would see that they'd buy it. We'd go to a motorcycle rally, man. We'd sell a hundred shirts like that, you know, but. Look, the whole thing with being PC and the politically correct thing, man, is like I don't know the plight that some people feel. So I think it's unfair for me being a tall guy, you know, you know, because I'm look, I'm, I'm I'm trying to change the stereotype of my company. With midget wrestling comes a negative connotation; it always has. Yeah. Um, we, we get grief and flack every now and then from somebody, you know, the LPA here and there. One time, one of the LPA people told me that. Well, why do you call it? I go, I don't even use the word midget anymore. Now you, I go, I call it micro wrestling. And they're like, well, why do you got to use the word micro? Why do you just call it wrestling? Now, why do you got to make it diminutive? And I'm like, well, that doesn't make any sense because if I didn't, it would just be regular wrestling and we wouldn't draw a crowd like we yeah. do. You know, like you, you can buy a mini car, you can buy a mini Coke, you can buy a mini beer. What's the difference, man? You know, my, my thing is, you know, Vern Troyer, mini me. You yeah. know that? Does anybody give him grief for being a character in a movie that he's acting like, like he, he's in a knapsack on the back of Mike Myers? Are they giving him grief that where my guys are just actors in a show and we're doing nothing derogatory? You know what I mean? Like, you know, some of these other companies out there, they do a thing called grind the midget where you put put one of the micro wrestlers in the ring and they bring girls in there and they grind all over. I don't do any shit like that, man. No. You know Dude, my, my, these kids are legitimate athletes out here doing nothing derogatory. And for anybody who doesn't know, the LPA is the little people of America. They're like the governing body of little people. And they can't stand companies like mine. You know, for whatever reasons, they, 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 they hate it. You know, anytime we get a news article done on us, that news person will contact them and they will never give us their seal of approval or anything like that. And they, they've never even been to one of my shows. They may have seen another show. But they haven't seen mine. Mine is an all-ages, family-friendly show. There's nothing there making fun of these little guys. Nothing whatsoever. It's just highlighting their athleticism. And what doesn't make sense to me is the little person demographic in the whole United States is very small compared to other groups. I, I, I don't know. I don't know if it's the globe or just the United States. There might be like 90,000 little people. So my thought is 
why ostracize somebody from your demographic when you should use whatever platform there is out there? I mean, dude, look at all the people that we're seeing a year. We're seeing a few hundred thousand people a year. That, yeah. what, what other little person in demographic other than those TV shows is getting that much view, you know, uh, people viewing it. So why not get together, come to some sort of understanding with one another and then use whatever platforms you have to create little people awareness, you know, and, that, that, and that's what I think they're doing wrong, you know, but who am I? What, you know, but you, Jack, you know what? The way you put it, that's great. Because you know what? The, I, I've been to the shows, and it's a wrestling show. It's it's not like you even think of them a micro after a while. You're watching a great wrestling show. You're watching like a two hour, maybe five great matches, and then a big giant finale and a title match, which makes it great. Because um, come on, the entertainment, the, the, the smiles and kids' faces when the show's over. They take pictures, like you know, you. It's a great show, man. And uh, cause me, I'm a, I'm a wrestling fan. I love wrestling, but when I look at the micro, I just think of them as another wrestling federation. Cause they just the wrestlers. I don't even think of them as little people, whatever. They're wrestlers, cause they they high fly, jumping off the top rope. They they beat the crap out of each other by hitting themselves with chairs and can. It's a wrestling <laughs> show. It's great. Uh, yeah, they're 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 great kids. Like I said, man. Is that you know? I, They've, I've, I've, they've the only people that I'm around, you know what I mean? It's just my, my, my whole life. And other than wrestling, I love each and every one of them. It's like they're my own flesh and blood, you know, I, even my whole family, you guys, you know, you hang out with my cousin, Nicole, oh, my, yeah. my sister and you know, my, I'm from New York. You know, I, I kind of, you know, I, I grew up back and forth with the Lower East Side is where, where I was born. And, uh, but I went to high school up in uh, upstate New York, you know, walk here, um, but you know, I still, I'm a New Yorker, man, you know, and whenever we go to New York, we go to the city or we go to my sister's house up in Walden and you know, my family loves them just like, you know, they're, they're her own kids, you know. <laughs> Jack, you want to hear something funny during the pandemic? I spelled nine weeks in Walk Hill. I saw that. I was in, I was in, hey, let me ask you a question. That's a kid. Do you ever go to Action Park? Oh, we went to Action Park a couple times a summer, man. People don't realize. I just saw the documentary class action, and I say I remember going to Action Park, 15, 16 years old, just getting destroyed, jumping into the cliffs, getting into the cars, getting into that water. I never thought that was dangerous, and now they talk about how dangerous it was and how these. It was incredible, man. It was pretty okay, funny. Hey, going going down the Alpine slide full speed around the corner <laughs> and flipping off and burns on your legs. But didn't somebody die? I thought somebody died in like, one of the lakes or something. Actually, two people died. The document one kid uh, fell off um, was on one of those, uh, you know, the ramp they used to have that little flat ramp that you get on, and it would take you down like that little tunnel, and then you would just go on, like a hundred miles per hour. Some kid hit the hit the side, fell off, hit some rock, and died. And then there was a kid that drowned. Like two kids drowned. Like it's crazy. There were people that people died. Anymore? Is it still open? No, no, Action Park did done a long time ago. Where did you see that documentary at? Oh, so the documentary is on HBO, but it's pretty crazy. Like HBO, Max, if you got HBO, it's on HBO. But I, I got to look at it. I remember going there as a kid, dude. You, they almost, you, you know, they got hit a few times for underage drinking because you go there, you would just drink and get. It was crazy. <laughs> well, you know, we, used, we used to go to Action Park in the wintertime because they used to have an all night ski. And I remember, I remember be, being in high school, having a, having a flask and drinking snake bites, coming down, <laughs> up, up, going up and down on the ski lift. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was action part. <laughs> yeah, that was great. <clears throat> like, so, uh, Jack, how can people get your information? And Monday when they when they log in, uh, what what's uh, what time does the show start? Is it at night or? Could they just log in Monday and start? I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to get the first episode. I'm pretty much done with the first episode. I just I just gotta, you know. I tell you what, the hardest part about it was was uh, the hardest thing was um, deciding whether I'm going to have like commentating going on like WWE because you know you've been to our show, yeah, and pretty much like I'm the MC. I'll I'll do the the, the music and the lights and the sound and all that, and I'll kind of commentate with the microphone. Yeah. And um, so I'm, well, I'm I'm trying to do like an audio track over top of it with the commentating, but I tell you, it's it's not easy, man. I, I, I you know what? There's a there's a lot of things I'm good at. I'm good at booking. I'm good at organizing my my you know my deep my 
attention to detail is phenomenal. And I, I, I tell you, man, trying to do the commentating like you hear those guys doing and people think that's easy. No, nah, that's tough. Right, and I, you know what? I, I got to give those guys props. Anybody that sits there and commentates a show is, um, is, 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 has got some type of skills, you know? So, you know, it, it, it's just not just for me. I got to have two people doing it, man. You know what I mean? And it's just like what the way I wanted it done was I, I, I wanted the wrestlers to be each of them to be the heel commentator ripping on each of the other little guys because i didn't think it would be cool if it was a tall guy like if it was me and you yeah and one of us was being the heel commentator making fun of the little guys that i don't i don't think that would be appropriate but if another little dude is making fun of the little guy that would be hysterical yeah you need like this you need like the stick guy and then you need like the the, the little guy just be like I can beat him. I can get him. <laughs> no, well, that's what I was going to do with just the wrestlers because this is the thing I was explaining to the wrestlers. So, like, if you watch a movie, there's only two hours in the movie. There's not enough time for character development and for, like, me and you or the audience to love that character. Yeah. Where they try to explain to them, like, character development, if you watch B Big Bang Theory and people fall in love with Sheldon and they fall in love with each of the characters – so with them, is these guys have such characters that I want to get them broadcasted as much as possible. I'm like, look, you guys want to be shown as much as possible because the more you're shown, the more T-shirts you're going to sell. You know what I mean? The more fans you're going to get, the, the whole nine yards, man. So um, just that, the whole character development with some of these, you know, and we, we created our own bits um, in our show. Um, we have a bit called Out and About in Pigeon Forge, where we filmed our own commercials all over Pigeon Forge at all of the attractions down there. Um, yeah. was, <laughs> hey, man, let me let me tell you, it was amazing that the city the city has opened their arms and embraced us wholeheartedly. Like I was shocked moving into this town because it's in southern Tennessee. Everybody in there has the slow draw. It's in, it's everyone's kind of sleepy, and all of a sudden these crazy you know, drunken micro wrestlers. Like we have our nights, the family guys and the party guys. And, you know, Brian Ryan has been banned from three bars down there in Pigeon Forge already. And Oh my God. <laughs> but I was shocked that, you know, we went to all the businesses and we said, Hey man, we're starting our own internet show. And uh, we want to see if you want to be part of it, man. They, you know, we, we went and did a mountain coaster. We went and out, they have an Alpine snow place where you can ride a snow tube in um inside year round we did go-karts uh we did uh paintball we did a zip line and so we filmed our own commercials um we have another bit called brother brotherly love it ain't and there's a lot of fighting going on between the micro wrestlers and i got a lot of that on film um we got another bit called you know people will say how in the hell did you do that but we have a bit called how in the micro do you do that you know being a little person how do they drive how do they wash clothes you know what i mean uh so we've made our own bits out of some of these things. And we, we have a bunch of our own bits, man, you know, and just like a regular, just like a regular TV show that you see, you know, and I got to remember though, I did this all on my own, so I'm no professional, but I'm, to be honest with you, I'm pretty proud of what I've even done for a guy in two months who's never filmed or edited before. And I did this all on my own and I look at it and I go, wow, well, I think what I've done is pretty impressive. Where am I going to be at? year from now and in a year from now will be a totally legit um show um you know what i mean like i'm hoping to get picked up by a network by then because here's what i think will happen so you know as we speak i have a uh, i have a company called me up one of our videos went viral um we had three videos go viral um one last year and two this year already with over six seven million views I got a call from a production company saying hey man i saw your video that went viral i researched your company he said that we produce Pawn Stars and we produce uh, Hell's Kitchen with Gordon Ramsay, and I want to try to do a show with you guys. So that's in wow. the works. so that's in the works for us right now. But you know, I've heard that before, man. This is you know, I've, I've been through this, you know, for the last two years without success. But my thought is, if I can prove this concept by selling my own subscriptions, you know, if I can sell 10, 20 thousand subscriptions, and the network sees that. That should give me an opportunity. And at that part, I'll be in a better negotiating deal with a network if I already have a proven concept, you know, because, you know, you, I don't know if you know, but, you know, starting out reality shows, they don't want to give you anything. You know, no, I don't want to give you nothing. Uh, we're, not, we're, 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 I'm, I'm, 
If it gets good, if it gets good, then they'll give you money. Yeah, but we're, we're not working for free, and nobody's getting anything. You know, they're not getting any T-shirts. They're not getting any rights. Anything that is micro wrestling is mine and the guys. Like no one's getting anything. I'm not making. We're not desperate. You know what I mean? So we're hanging in there. I'm not, I'm not signing. I had a deal with a TV. I had a deal with a production company wanted to sign a deal with me. It was the first one that I I won't I was in contact with they had done a few shows on mtv but every time they would send me an agreement to sign i would send it to my lawyer and my lawyer kept telling me you're out of your mind if you do this man like they were like, yeah, you know what it fell through and that that would have went through that was two years ago but i've been holding out you know what i mean i'm for the right deal but if you go to micro wrestling.com um, i'm gonna try to get this we don't have like a certain time it's not like eight o'clock on mondays you know what i mean like it's I'll have it up there early each week, but we're just, you know, I thought Monday Night Micro, man, was a kind of catchy name and kind of thing. You know? And I didn't take it off of Monday Night Raw, and it wasn't because of Monday Nitro. It just was kind of the amalgamation of the two. And I thought, yeah, well, Monday Night Micro would be cool. You know, sounds neat, you know, kind of rolls off your tongue. Um, but if you go to microwrestling.com in the navigation bar, you'll see Micro TV. And if you click on that link, you click on the nav bar, you'll see another link that'll take you to our platform. Um, the platform is called Uscreen. There's not a lot of platforms out there that do a monthly subscription. Um, where you know their whole platform. Are, so our subscription is going to be nine ninety nine a month. You know, think about it. How many people? There's you know subscription based stuff is huge out there. Netflix, Hulu, you know what whatever it is, man. And I was thinking nine ninety five. It's not that much money. You know, I, I think it's pretty entertaining. You get four episodes a month. You know what I mean? I, I have a lot of free content also that I'm going to put out there. Um, so, you know, we're hoping that works. So you said uh, microwrestling.com. Look for micro TV in the navigation bar and you'll see it. So, you know, plus on the website also is micro chat. If you click on the micro chat link, you can, you know, I think have your have one of the rest of your happy birthday to one of your kids, man. Or if you're, you're 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 having a bad day, here's another thing, man. If you're drunk at two o'clock in the morning, and you're <laughs> if you're drunk at two o'clock in the morning, you're at a party, man. You know, video chat one of the mic live video chat one of the mic or all the micro wrestlers, man. You know what I mean? That they'll make any party a little bit more lively, man. You you've hung out with them, you've seen. Oh them. yeah, they're, they're they're crazy. We we went on a little bar for a few New Years and we got pretty drunk. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And you know what, Little Miss, she's hosting the first episode. She'll be there. Oh, that's good. So that should be good, man. Little Miss is back for the first episode. Not yeah. bad. She, she's hosting the first episode, and the first episode is a Little Show versus El Torito. And they'll be, be a good match. Yeah, they're wrestling for the micro the micro championship, um, the, the, the belts, the first ever Monday Night Micro. So it's pretty huge for all of us. You know, I wanted to put the two best guys that we had out there. You know, episode two is Baby Jesus versus the micro rocker, Little Fabio. Episode three will be Flying Ryan versus Too Tall. Um, I don't think you met too tall, but you know, I, I, you know, like I said, we filmed a great deal, man. And, you know, we're just ready to get this out there, ready for people to see, you know, what we do for a living and hopefully gain some new fans. And that's good, man. So that's, that's good. So people this Monday, the premiere of the first episode on the, um, micro wrestling.com, check it out. Cause, um, you know, nine ninety nine. You're gonna get four episodes a month. It's a bargain. It's like, it's almost like almost two fifty an episode. Yeah, you know? here's what here, here's what I'm gonna do. Also, I'm gonna put this on there. So if you buy if you buy a month, the first monthly subscription you buy, I'm gonna give you two free tickets to one of our shows when we're in your when you're in the area. So if you come to Pigeon Forge on vacation, you get two free general admission tickets. And those tickets down there, man, it's a tourist town. They're thirty bucks a piece. So that's the sixty dollars. Uh, just say if you know if you live in New York City and we do a show in Wontaw, um, next time you come, just show me that you bought the uh, micro TV, and we'll give you two free general admission tickets, man. You know what I mean? To the show anywhere in the country. You know I run the show as an owner, so just as long as I see that you bought those tickets or you bought that first monthly your first monthly subscription, I'll give you two free tickets. I'm definitely going to buy the uh, prescription and check out the show. And then I'll comment it on, it with, uh, on the freak show with John, you know, the guy with the mohawk that I do the show with. So we'll probably talk about it on, 
on uh, Tuesday where we do the uh, free anytime show. You, and anytime you want one of these, you know, one of the wrestlers on, man, let me know. You know? All right, yeah, because uh, you see how easy. I just got to send them like a, a link, and I can have them on and talk to each and one of them. Maybe I'll maybe after I see the first episode, talk to the uh, maybe uh talk to um what you call it, Torito or um. Um, um, well, Torito, you have to, the, the redneck trasher, the redneck brawler, brawler, yeah. Well, Torito, you'd have to have some, you have to speak to him in Spanish. His English isn't, he doesn't do so well with the English. Um, I, I, I got it, I got a translator, I could put the thing in English in the bottom. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, yeah, like I said, yeah, no, he's 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 great, man, but he just struggles with the English, man, so it makes it a little bit difficult, um, for him, man. Um, but man, yeah, I appreciate you having me on and you know, letting us get the word out there, yeah, man. So, uh, Jack, thank you for all your time. I know you're a busy man, you got a big schedule. But uh, thank you for all the love and thank you for being on the show. And um, send me um, any uh, things that I can make on. Like I'll put your Facebook thing. I'll put a bunch of things. And um, thank you. Send you uh, all the love, man. Hope to see you soon, brother. All right. Thanks, Rob. Talk to you later, buddy. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.